here to the right of the vessel, the starboard side over there, the South Bank, is the cultural centre of London. 1951, we had the Festival of Britain, the celebrate Britain's greatness in the world. That festival lasted a few years, they then brought it down. Uh, but we still got that Festival Hall, Hayward Gallery, Percival Rooms, Queen Elizabeth Rooms, National Theatre and the British Film Archive. People, as we go under the bridge, give the people on the bridge a wave. Kids, make some noise. built it on time and on budget. Yeah. They also made it out of self-cleaning stone. Oh, Actually, it's also called the Ladies' Bridge because it's the longest bridge on the Thames and it goes on and on. <laughs> no, naughty, naughty. We don't do naughty things on the start of the evening. Well, not till tonight at least. <laughs> you spot after the after Waterloo Bridge on the right hand side, National Theatre, which is a great example of brutalist architecture. Brutalist architecture is meant to be brutal on the eye. We will agree that National Theatre is definitely brutal on the eye. We don't have to be fabulous theatres within that complex. Also houses the world's first skateboard park, which opened in 1953. Now, towards the bow of the vessel, good deal of the dome of St Paul's Cathedral. You'll notice all the tall buildings are all based around one spot, around Leadenhall. This is because there's a law in London that says that you must be able to see the dome of St Paul's Cathedral from 13 positions throughout the city. Which is why all the buildings are funny shapes as well. They are maintaining these sight lines to the dome of St Paul's Cathedral. The bridge we're coming down to, Blackfriars, gets its name from a monastery. They used to sit on the north bank of the river. The monks in the monastery used to wear black robes, so the area started to become called the Blackfriars. On the right hand side, there's a red building with a tower on top. Now, you might think that tower says Oxo. It doesn't. It doesn't say anything at all, because this is a royal river. You're not allowed to advertise on a royal river. But the Oxo Company who made the cubes bought that building to put up their put up that tower, they were prosecuted. And in court they had their very clever lawyer plead to a particularly stupid judge. No, 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 it doesn't say Oxo, we just ordered a random selection of circles and straight lines. Purely coincidentally come out saying Oxo. Judge believed them, went, oh okay, fair enough. Silly judge. On the right hand side, just this side of the river, of the bridge, there's a pub called, called Doggins. This commemorates a race that we have on the Thames every year for the top six autumn and apprentices. They get to row six and a half kilometres up the Thames to uh, Barnes, instigated in 1715 by Thomas Doggett. He was an Irish actor, he used to work at the Haymarket. Every evening he was rowed six and a half kilometres up to his lodgings. This is such a feat that he instigated the world's oldest rowing race, the Doggett's coat and badge race. If you get to win it, you get to cover your coat and badge to wear another sum of money. Very prestigious. But behind Doggett's there's a big tall building with a, a bump on the side. One of London's newest buildings, the actual address is number one, Blackfriars. But in London we tend to nickname all of our buildings. The nickname for that particular building is the Kim Kardashian. Either you see it or you don't. Okay guys, now, the second of the two bridges we're just about to go under, a Blackfriars here, was built by men. It was five years late between the million man over budget. Around, right, ladies? As we go under the bridge, those set of the two bridges, on the right hand side there's a very tall chimney. Charles Gilbert Scott, designed of the famous red telephone boxes in London, was commissioned to build two power stations. They stopped producing electricity in the early 1980s. 
fantasy and bank side. Uh, bank side on the right has now morphed into the Tate Modern Box Collection of modern artwork. Modern artwork's not your thing, it's not my thing. There is a free to get into Cocktail Bar, I promise you. If you go into Cocktail Bar, the artwork will look a lot better. I might even talk to you. Uh, the bridge we're coming down to was commissioned to build that bridge to celebrate the millennium when people started walking on it started swaying from side to side they had to shut the bridge down redesign the bridge and when he was asked why his bridge swayed he said nothing to do with my bridge my design it's you londoners you march everywhere he got away with that Not oh, silly judges on the right hand side there's a white building with a thatched roof the world famous globe theater shakespeare built his actual globe theater 50 metres in there from there in Park Street. That burned down in 1613. Sam Wanamaker, an American, come looking for the mighty Shakespeare. Shakespeare could find it to the Shakespeare's Life Theatre. But people, we are coming down to Southern Bridge. That's the nickname on the table. as the Lonely Bridge. Give me an R. Bridge on the river that has the least amount of footfall, least amount of vehicle traffic. Still lit by gaslight at night, so it's a mecca up there for lovers in the evening. Now, if you go back to Shakespeare's day, early 1600s, if you wanted any entertainment in London, you'd have to come out of the city, the area to the left, that was controlled by a very religious group called the Puritans. They banned all form of entertainment. You'd have to go on the bank side, the area on the right, which was actually in Surrey at the time. The last vestige of that area is the old Anchor Tavern, you can see. Parts go back to 1620. Ben Johnson, Dr. Johnson, Samuel Beach and Charles Dickens, all drunk in that pub. Now, people, nothing to say. We are going quite fast because the rivers are heavy at the moment, so we're going mid the river. We'll be slow as we go. As you go out from under this bridge, do not look to the left. Do not look to the left for your own benefit. Look to the right, there's a pirate ship. Kids, look the three, give me your best pirate. One, two, three. Ah. It is the authentic reproduction of Sir Francis Drake's Golden Boy, 1577. Francis Drake served with that the world. Left the pack with 84 men, come back with 42. Did come back with 25 million pounds of the treasure loan which was enough to bail for our national debt three times. So we didn't execute him as a pirate. We give him uh, a, night, a nice place to live, didn't we, in this second. First, thank you, Spanish, thank you, Portuguese, for giving him back. Thank you, Guys, on the right hand side, we're going to the Bridge Museum. Bridge Museum, Bridge Museum. The tallest building in Western Europe is over a thousand foot tall. 72 stories, it was going to be 73, but that's another story. And there's a lot of things <laughs> out of the shop. Seven Star, Shangri-La Hotel, restaurants, businesses, apartments. You can buy an apartment up the Shard for 50 million pounds. Then you get to take your friends up the Shard. We're coming down to a great big warship, HMS Belfast, at the Stella Career in the Royal Navy. Navy. Commissioned in 1936. Fought in the Russian convoys, the Arctic convoys, the Atlantic convoys, the Korean War, sunk the Shan Horse. And it has the distinction of being the vessel by the first salvos onto the beaches of D-Day, 6th of June 1944. Now owned by the Imperial War Museum, made a pound for it. Best view of Tower of, Bridge, of Tower of London on the left hand side. You'll never get a better view of the Tower of London than that. Coming down to Tower Bridge, the world's most photographed bridge. Sorry, San Francisco, we've got it. Tower Bridge is a vascular bridge, which means it's an iron and steel bridge. Stone cladding on the outside was put there to make the bridge sympathetic with the Tower of London on the uh, on the left hand side. And uh, the bascules in the centre weigh a thousand tons each. They raise to, to let tall ships through. At one time, you would get 40 rises a day. These days, you're lucky if you get one rise a day. Now, a little tradition on the Thames that says that if you shout and scream and all that, wave your hands in the air like you just don't care. Wave at people on the bridge. As you go under the bridge, 
If there's people out there waving back, you will have five years good luck. Stems from the Victorian sailors, last opportunity they had to wave at their loved ones. Their loved ones are up there waving back, they probably return safe and sound. Another little tradition though that says if you give your loved one a little crack as you go under the bridge, you will have a lifetime of health and happiness. If you don't, you probably won't. Okay, so people, make some noise. Let's get our five-fingered wave. Kids, loads of noise. Hello! Hello on the bridge! Hello! Oh, there we go. No problem at all. So, that's a river team. Metropolitan in the world wasn't always the case. 1858, we had the big stink. Do we know any big stinks? Yeah, it's a bit of a point. When all of these sewage from London flowed into the river, the river got that bad, that smelly Parliament could not function. Parliament instructed the Victorian engineer, Sir Joseph Passenger, to build these sewers down either side of the Thames. This had the effect of constricting the river, but it did clean the river up. And now we have 120 species of fish, eels, trout, salmon, seal, walruses, mermaids. On a Saturday night, you can definitely see a mermaid in the Thames, trust me. <laughs> Best view of Tower Bridge on the left-hand side, guys. The port side of the vessel. You'll never get a better view of Tower Bridge than that. This is your new Facebook profile picture. <laughs> Tower Bridge, isn't as old as it seemed, opened in 1894, designed by Horace Jones. The one time painted brown. Queen Victoria, who was on the throne at the time, had a big thing for a chopper. So they painted the bridge brown in honour of Queen Victoria. The walkways above were put there by the Victorians, so you uh, didn't have to wait before the, uh, when the batch field was risen to cross the river. Now guys, we'll be a little bit slower going back up the river because we're going against the tide. Over the river. So as we sail under London Bridge, uh, Tower Bridge on the way back, on the right hand side you can see the Tower of London. Now, Britain was invaded in 1066 by William the Conqueror. And what he used to do is destroy the area around where he invaded as a way of imposing his will on the people of that area. But the city of London, which was established by the Romans in 1844, it makes money. So, providing the people of London paid William the Conqueror taxes, money, tribute, he wouldn't destroy their city. But he did build the White Tower, the area in the middle of the complex, as a way of imposing his will on the people of London. If they paid him taxes, he wouldn't destroy their city. Only seven people have ever been executed inside the tower. You had to be royal to be executed inside the tower. 117 executed outside. Three Queens of England lost their life inside the tower. If you can give me their name, I'll give you a high five on the way out. Hello! We've had many London bridges. This is the latest incarnation. The, uh, the one prior to this, this one's only been there since 1971. The one prior to this is over a lake in Arizona, Lake Havasu. The most famous London bridge, the medieval version, that lasted for 600 years and had 200 wooden properties on it. One of the properties on that bridge was a chapel dedicated to Thomas a Beckett. None of the properties on that particular bridge was the world's first public toilet, which was sponsored by Dick Whittington, the real Richard Whittington. He was Lord Mayor of London six times. As you sail under London Bridge, think you're so lucky there's not public toilets up there now. On the right hand side towards the front is a big column with a gold knob on top. This is the monument. 1666 we had the Great Fire of London when 80% of the city burned down. So Christopher Wren was commissioned to rebuild the city, but first he built a monument, 62 metres tall, as a way of Londoners being able to watch their city be rebuilt around them. If you laid the monument down, the tip of the monument wouldn't be put in lane where the Great Fire started. On the right hand 
inside the white building with a clock face on it is Customs House. At one time when skippers got into the corner of London where we are at the moment, they would go over and pay the duty payable to the Crown in Customs House. Next building up with a fish on top, Billingsgate Fish Market. All the fish caught in the Thames at one time was auctioned off in Billingsgate. Yeah, okay guys, so sailing back up river, uh, just the other side of uh, London Bridge, on the right hand side, is a white building with a flagpole on top. This is the Fishmongers Livery Company Hall. Now, livery companies are a lot like trade unions. In time gone by, you would have had to have done your five year apprenticeship you would then have been inducted into the livery company hall. They all have halls dotted up and down the river. The river, of course, was the main highway at one time. Where the hall is where the business of the company would have taken place. There's 110 livery companies, and they all have halls dotted in and around the city of London. Okay guys, now we're coming down to a good view of the monument. The monument is the world's biggest freestanding stone column. It's 306 steps tall. If you climb the, the monument, you get a little certificate to say, I've climbed the monument. And uh, between the two white buildings on the right hand side, you do get, or you will get, a very good view of the monument. Okay guys, now as we sail under London Bridge, if you look on the bridge itself, there's a red marking. These are the emblem, this or this is the emblem for the Bridge House Trust. The Bridge House Trust is a, a charity which admit, owns and administers the, uh, all the bridges over the Thames. It's uh, owned by the Corporation of London. So the Bridge House Trust is a charity that owns and runs all of the bridges over the River Thames. On the right hand side guys, between the two buildings, good view of the monument. And just beyond the bridge, on the right, of course, good view of uh, the Fishmongers Livery Company Hall. But just the other side of the bridge, on the left hand side, there's some people waving at you kids. Wave at them. Hello. Hello. On the left hand side, there's, uh, you can see the very, very white building. It's the greatest here. It's literally done with all. And if you carry on looking to the left, the cathedral you can see over there, Southern Cathedral, one of London's oldest cathedrals. That cathedral's been there since the 1400s. Shakespeare's brother, Edmund, is buried in Southern Cathedral. And John Harvard, chaplain for the University in America. He was an Englishman, he was uh, baptised over there. But people, as we come down to Cannon Street Railway Bridge, for your own benefit, do not look to the right hand side. Do not look to the right. Because the windows under the bridge on the right hand side are a sauna. And they put the windows in the wrong way round. We can see in, they can't see out. Don't look! You might see naked people. Everybody's looking. Is there anybody over there? Anybody in there? No, I don't think there is. Never mind, perhaps it's a bit early in the day, early in the afternoon, eh? Oh, never mind guys, never mind. <laughs> Another time. Gotta tell you, sometimes there's uh, <laughs> sometimes you get some right exhibition, sometimes you get 50 folks out here. Yeah. So only 7,000 people live in the city of London, the square mile. 350,000 people come to the city and work every day. All of their rubbish is taken away from walls and walls, from walls on the right hand side. Walk stands for warehouse at River Front. That is the last remaining working wall on the Thames in the city of London. Coming down to the lonely bridge again, give me an R! Oh. Oh. Fabulous. Just beyond the bridge 
On the right hand side, uh, the big white building with game with Doric Columns is the Vintners Livery Company Hall. Oh, Vintners are publicans, wine merchants basically. And just beyond the Vintners Hall, on the right hand side, the little inlet you can see over there is uh, Queen High. The last remaining Roman dock on the Thames in the city of London. 2,000 years old, great tourist to today, you really shouldn't come down there. But we are coming down to the Millennium Bridge again, the Wobbly Bridge. And as we sail under the bridge, if you look to the right hand side, good view of St Paul's Cathedral. We've had five St Paul's Cathedrals, the fourth one was the tallest building in the world at one time. That burned down in the Great Fire of London. So Christopher Wren was commissioned to rebuild the current St Paul's Cathedral and he built it 365 foot tall. One foot for each day of the year because religion is for every day, not just uh, Christmas and weekends. Features the second largest cathedral dome roof in the world after St Peter's in Rome. Admiral Lord Nelson, Duke of Wellington, Sir Christopher Wren are all buried. Charles married Diana, Lady Thatcher, Winston Churchill at their funerals. Very, very important. I think the Queen's going to have a, a Jubilee celebrations next year. So it is a very, very important building for the people of London. But have we got any Harry Potter fans on the boat? Hey, on the right hand side, just beyond the bridge, you can see Hot Walls. I can't lie. It's the City of London School for Boys. But it is where Daniel Radcliffe, Chapman Place, went to school. So in a way, it is Hogwarts. So we are coming down to South, uh, Blackfriars Railway Station, the only station in the world that spans both sides of a river. The roof of the station features solar panels which provide 80% of the power to the station. So it is in fact the cleanest railway station in the world. Featured in many blockbuster movies. Latest uh, Mission Impossible, you can see Tom Cruise running across the top of that building. But guys, very shortly on the right hand side of the starboard bow, you'll see a, a spire, a church spire coming to view. This is the spire of St Bride's Church. St. Bride's is the inspiration for our current wedding cakes. Late 1700s, a baker was commissioned to make a wedding cake. A little bit stuck for inspiration. He looked at the spire of St. Bride's and thought, you know what, I'll make a wedding cake that's exactly like that. So that is the inspiration for our current wedding cake, the spire on St. Bride's. Went to my first wedding since lockdown a couple of weeks ago. Really emotional. Even the cake was in tears. Okay guys, now, between the two bridges there are these mysterious columns in the river. Well, they're not mysterious, there's nothing <laughs> mysterious about them. They are the stanchions from the old Chatham Dover and London Railway St Paul's Bridge that crosses the Thames here. And they're so well embedded in the bed of the river you can't get them out. So we just grade two missing them, paint them red, I hope you would notice. So we talk about it on every single cruise. Now the Victorian sewers that I previously told you about down inside the river, they have now come to the end of their useful life. Would you believe it? They are now full up with poo. So we are now building a super sewer. We are building a super sewer 30 metres below the bed of the river. And that's what the construction work is you can see on the right hand side. We are building a super sewer to take away our super poo. established the city of London, they put a wall around the city with gates in the wall, Bishop's Gate, All Gate, Triple Gate, places like that. But uh, the city of London become full up with people. So people started living around the Minster in the West, Westminster, the Abbey. That area grew into a city in its own right, the city of Westminster. The city of Westminster got bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually joins the city of London. And that happens just down here to the rear of the white vessel with the yellow funnel at the uh, bow of the ship. There's two dragons on the wall. 
It's the exact spot where the City of London morphs with the City of uh, Westminster. So in London we have two cities and the metropolitan area of London. The area beyond the trees over there uh, is a temple. At one time the encampment for the Knights Templars. They were banned in 1312. So the area was then given to the lawyers, so it's now the home to the lawyer school. But it does feature an original Knights Templar church, it's featured in the Da Vinci Code. So it's free to get into. Might want to pop over here and have a look at that. Okay guys, now, the white vessel off the starboard bow with the yellow funnel, HMS Wellington, had a stellar career in the Royal Navy. During the Second World War, that would go out looking like an unarmed merchant vessel. German submarines would spot it, see it's unarmed, not wanting to waste a torpedo. They would surface and try and kill it with their gun. When that happened, the sides of Wellington were drop down, exposing the six-inch cannon. They would then sink the U-boat. Had a stellar career in the Royal Navy. Now the Master Mariners, Livery Company Hall. Now, can I aim this at the kids, really? Kids, never go into the River Thames. It is a very dangerous place. It flows at six knots. Nobody can swim at six knots. Rises and falls, 21, 22 foot. Twice in every 24 hours. There's undercurrents that go in the opposite direction of the flow of the river. It's always moving. So it's a very dangerous place. Never go into the river, not even a paddle. So we have four lifeboat stations on the Thames. The average call-out for a lifeboat station round the shore of Britain is 200 call-outs a year. Tower, the lifeboat station just this side of uh, Waterloo Bridge, has an average call-out of 400. So you are very well protected on the Thames, but never ever go into the river. The river will take you. On the right-hand side, the Green Dome Building, Somerset House. At one time, we know the British people, there's a registration of birth, deaths and marriages. Home to the Duke of Somerset, also served as the Admiralty. Nelson would have gone there to get his, his orders for Trafalgar. The Thames used to flow directly through the centre of that building at one time. We are coming down to the ladies' bridge again. Give yourselves a whoop! Well done, the girls. They eh? on time, on budget. What can I tell you? So, partners, fellas, just to say thank you to the ladies, you might want to take them into the world famous Savoy Hotel. Just beyond the bridge on the right hand side, green roof and a flagpole, the Savoy Hotel one of the world's leading hotels. A one night stay in the Savoy's Imperial Suite will cost you 13,000 pounds, with a minimum of a three night stay. If you can afford that, you could be best friends. But you can go into the American bar, which was Britain's first cocktail bar. Little bit dear, but it is, uh, is worthwhile, actually. If you dine 13 people in the Savoy Hotel, they will lay a 14th place, put a little china cat in the 13th position. Uh, because it's unlucky to die in 13 people. The cat's called Casper. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. Okay, guys, now. On the right hand side, there's a great big plot place. This is uh, next door to the Savoy, it's a big Ben's Eye. It is the biggest club place in, uh, in London. It's actually three inches bigger than the uh, bigger than Big Ben or the clock face in the Elizabeth Tower. It's done deliberately to have the biggest clock. At one time it was the headquarters building to uh, to um, Shell Max Oil Company. Now on the right hand side there's an Egyptian obelisk. Cleopatra's needle, three and a half thousand years old. It was a present from the people of Egypt to the people of Britain to, to uh, celebrate Nelson's victory over Napoleon at the Battle of the Nile. And the Sphinxes over there are placed there the wrong way round. Sphinxes are meant to be looking away, looking for danger. Victorians didn't know that, they put the wrong way round, those ones look like they're having a chat. <laughs> okay guys, so coming down to Hunterford Railway Bridge again, 
And once again, you get a really good view of the Charing Cross Railway Station. Kids, this is your last opportunity to wave at people on bridges. Get your five fingers waved back. Just beyond the bridge, <laughs> just beyond the bridge, there's a funny looking building, a chateau-like looking building. This is Whitehall Court. It's built on the site of the old palace of Whitehall, where Anne Boleyn married Henry VIII and Charles I had his head chopped off. They pulled that court down, and uh, well, that palace down, put up Whitehall Court, which at one time housed MI5 at the Liberal Party. Make some noise, kids! on the way up, the eye do at the top, and it's all downhill from there on. <laughs> but marriage is about the three rings, isn't it, if you think about it? Engagement ring, wedding ring, suffering. <laughs> the ladies are nodding, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, so the river's not being particularly nice to us flowing quite strong today. So I've got a chance to talk to you about New Scotland Yard on the right hand side. White building with the, with the flagpole on top. Home to the Metropolitan Police Force, headquarters building. Uh, it's always been in that area, the headquarters building. Previously it was in Northern Shore North, the red building beside. You can, all, you can tell that it's always been in that area, the home to the Metropolitan Police, because between the white and the red building, there's a great big tree that sticks right up. Top of that tree on the left-hand side, it's a big branch that sticks out. That is special branch. <laughs> Promise that's the last one. Special branch. Guys, give us a shout out on TripAdvisor, Facebook, Twitter. All the stuff I don't understand, I'm sure you do. Uh, if you've enjoyed your experience today, my name's Mick. If you haven't, my name's Derek. <laughs> Mick would be good. Please do remain seated, guys, until I give you a heads up. It's safe to leave the vessel. And when you leave the vessel, take unwanted things, sweet paper, face masks, children, mother-in-laws, teachers. <laughs> take all the things you don't need anymore. <laughs> guys, on behalf of Liam downstairs, 